As we all adjust to the new reality of COVID-19, we know that education at home is going to be an ongoing concern. And joining me now is Nancy, uh, an expert on uh, homeschooling. Welcome, Nancy. Thanks for having me. All right, so first of all, let's introduce yourself uh, to the viewers and your background in education. Sure. So Nancy McIntyre, I work with the Catholic District School Board in Eastern Ontario. My current role is Principal of Curriculum. Um, what's great about this role is I get to work with all the schools across the board, so I get to see the great things happening. Um, as well, I'm a mom of three, and two of my kids are in school, so I'm getting to experience this online journey uh, with a personal perspective as well. That's excellent. Now, so let's uh, move on to some tips that uh, you have to maximize uh, education at home and parents that are that are adapting to this online learning. What is your advice to them and their, their students? Okay, so I'm going to share four tips that I think are important. Uh, the first tip, start simple. Uh, I think it's an important tip for our families to start with is knowing that you don't need to replicate school, especially if this is causing any stress to you or your family. The well-being of our families is of most importance. So just focus on supporting skills that are key to your child's future success, um, such as creativity, where we're encouraging our kids to use their imagination, ask questions, problem solve, really stick with the problem. Communication skills, where children are sharing ideas and listening to each other. And uh, healthy living, really supporting our kids in their mental and physical health. We really do trust that our parents know what's best for their kids. So we know that them deciding to get their direction in a pace that works for everyone in the house is probably what's best. A uh, second tip that I wanted to share is just daily reflection, taking um, time maybe to start and end the day in prayer. Uh, prayer, starting the day in prayer as a family can really set the tone for the day. It helps students um, be calm and really provides opportunities for them to express their feelings. Ending the day in prayer is a way for them to take time as a family to offer gratitude and uh, really pray for those in need, especially during this time. I also wanted to share that we have some resources that are available through School Mental Health Ontario. So if parents are having any concerns or wondering how they can support um, their children with mental health, we do have a, a lot of resources on our board website. Um, as a board, we also have supports for our students and for our parents. And I know that our school support staff are working diligently to ensure that our families are connected to these resources. A third tip that I wanted to share was stay connected. We really do miss our students, and I know that our staff are putting forth every effort to stay connected um, and staying connected with their schools across the board. I'm seeing a lot of things happening on social media as well as in the online classrooms. Um, we have schools who start the day at 9 o'clock online, maybe through Instagram, and they're doing a daily prayer. Um, they're offering a day's challenge for students as well as uh, some DPA physical activity. So daily physical activity where they're starting with a dance party, getting the kids moving. And there's been a lot of positive feedback of how um, that uh, parents love that that starts the day for their kids and gets things going in the household. We have some schools that are doing um, spirit weeks as well as read out loud. So lots of great things happening. So what I say to our students and their families is just ensure you're following um, your school's social media and checking out the school webpage. And the last tip that I wanted to share is just ask questions. Uh, we really want our parents and guardians to know that they are not alone in this and they can reach out to their classroom teachers, their school principals. We have our board ICT support and each other. We are a community and we are in this together. So don't be afraid to ask questions because really the question that you have may help us to support other families who are having those same challenges. So those are four really important tips that I think will help. And Nancy, when you talk about, uh, you know, some of those staying connected with, with schools, uh, and it, it kind of brings a, a little bit of normalcy, uh, but at the same time, you did say in your, in your very first tip that you don't have to replicate a school day. So that leads me perfectly into the next question, which is just uh, in terms of, of structuring your day, lunches, recesses, breaks, things like that, what's your advice in terms of that? Um, well, we know it's not the same as being at school, but uh, our hope is to continue the student learning and ensuring that students are moving forward in their understanding of grade level curriculum. Uh, we understand it can look different for each of our families, so hopefully some of the tips mentioned can help. A reminder, I have to remind myself often too, is just be patient and kind with yourselves. We know you're doing the very best to support your children in every way during this challenging time. So um, some things that you're talking about as far as keeping with the schedule, take frequent breaks. Children and young adults um, need balance uh, with their school day. So recreational activities, nutritional breaks, 
ensuring there's a routine. Um, we know that sharing close living arrangements can be difficult sometimes when you're trying to do work as well. So if you have a schedule for your children where one's online while the other one's having a break time and just take learning outside, there's uh, some of the great learning does happen outdoors. Absolutely. And just to finish off, Nancy, how do you, uh, some of those actually sound like great tips for this next question, but how do you keep children engaged and interested? Okay, so um, we really want to uh, reiterate here how we know that student success uh, only happens when students are engaged. So um, earlier this year, we had our teachers uh, working with online math programs through Marion Small, and uh, we had other schools that were using Zorbits and Dreambox. So those are game-based uh, math programs where students are having fun and they're moving uh, forward in their proficiency in math. So these, um, we've been working with these companies during um, this online learning, and we're now able to provide these these online games to all of our elementary students. So if parents are interested in getting started with that, they can go onto our board website. There's some instructions there, or they can reach out to their child's math teacher. And in regards to literacy we have an awesome digital library it's called Sora um, so it's K to 12 so kindergarten to grade 12 it's uh, for all levels and interests uh, we have graphic novels and audio books definitely something there for every uh, for anyone so they can just go to mycdsbo.com to access that digital library Excellent. Well, Nancy, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me and sharing these tips for parents uh, as we know that they that both them and their children are adapting to this new reality. Awesome. Thanks for having me.